What's up, peeps? It's uh, Nick Johnson, your favorite sports YouTube journalist, back in here with another video. And today, we're going to talk baseball. Now, I did say in my last video that I was going to make a video on my Super Bowl predictions. I'll probably make that one tomorrow. It's still going to be relatively fresh, and I'll make it one who. But today, we're going to talk baseball. Now, <laughs> I got word a couple hours ago on an article that just popped up. And it was a move that I really did not expect as a baseball fan, and as a Dodger fan in particular, but it does really upgrade the roster in some type of way, even though we still need to figure out a way to solve a glaring hole at a certain position on the team. This move is still really shocking to me, but it really makes a statement, and it gives us a strength of position that will solidify our chances to uh, make a run in another World Series title. Now, the move that I'm talking about is that the Los Angeles Dodgers have agreed to a three-year a three-year $102 million contract with Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer, arguably the biggest free agent in the market, arguably one of the few left, if not the biggest fish left on that free agent market, has agreed to join his hometown club, the Dodgers, on a three-year deal with $102 million. Now, the terms of the contract, from what I've been told, is that in the first two years, which both include opt-outs, you can opt out of the first year or you can opt out of the second year. And from what I can gather from those uh, annual average value of how much he'll get paid in those first two seasons, he'll get paid forty, either forty or forty-one million dollars in his first year, and forty-five million dollars in his second year. Now, in year three, he'll get paid like. Lesser than that, but hey, those first two years with high annual average value, which basically will make him the highest, play, pay, highest paid player in MLB history in terms of annual average value. Now, he won't surpass that overall annual average value in terms of that contract with Garrett Cole because Garrett Cole's annual average value throughout his entire contract is $36 million. Trevor Bauer, through the entirety of the contract, will get paid $34 million. But in his first two years, he'll get paid for $40 million and above, which makes him the highest paid player in MLB history in terms of annual average value for a duration or certain years of a contract. So, congrats to him. Welcome to Los Angeles, Trevor Bauer. Now, those of you who are pretty much familiar with them, you can say he's one of the biggest personalities in MLB right now. For a guy who talks a lot of shit, but backs it up with his play and whatnot. And his style of play is just really, really incredible. He is one of the top 10, if not top 5, pitchers in the league right now. For those of you who remember him, he spent one year with the Arizona Diamondbacks before he got traded in some blockbuster deal to the Cleveland Indians. Which basically where he spent for the next 5.5 years developing himself into one of their best young rising arms that they had. And he was also part of that Indians rotation which included um, fellow two-time signing award winner um, Corey Kluber. That made it all the way to the 2016 World Series, which, of course, they lost in seven games to the Chicago Cubs after leading three games to one in that series. And we all know how that happened. So, yeah, he was part of that rotation of the Indians rotation that made the World Series. And from there, he just got even better. And it kept off with a fine 2018 season that nailed him his first career All-Star nod. Now... Then next year, the following year at the 2019 trade deadline in a bizarre three-team trade, he gets dealt to the Cincinnati Reds. I guess with the fact that uh, Cincinnati, uh, the I, I apologize, the Cleveland Indians have a young rising rotation, and they still have a roster that's willing to, that's still competing in terms of position-wise. They were relying more on their young arms and trying to shed salary. So it was a salary a clearance move, trading away Trevor Bauer in the three-team deal. Sending him to the Cincinnati Reds where right off the bat with his new club, he kind of tailed off. But in his first full season and his only first full season, a season and a half with the Indians, he put together arguably the best season of his career. Posting a 177 ERA with 100 strikeouts and 73 innings in last season's short pandemic year. You know, because the whole COVID situation and whatnot, everybody in the bubble, all that bullshit. 
and was instrumental in helping the Reds make the uh, the playoffs for the first time since 2013. So all that and his all that hard work that he put in, his best statistical season, nailed him his first career Cy Young award. He was the he is now the reigning National League Cy Young award winner after putting it together his best season yet and of course his time with the Reds was unlikely when they said that they don't plan to resign him but they weren't going to give him what they wanted so and he decided to keep his options open he won a long-term deal and with high annual average value and heading into this signing his choosing came down to the Dodgers and the New York Mets who were actually the leading favorite to get Bauer services after you know they pulled off a blockbuster trade with the Indians to get Bauer's former teammates, you know, superstar shortstop Francisco Lindor and starting pitcher Carlos Carrasco, you know. And, of course, the Mets have already have a strong rotation of themselves with Jacob deGrom, Noah Syndergaard, Marcus Stroman, and, Re and like I said, Carlos Carrasco. So they have a really strong rotation themselves, and you have one of the best personalities and top superstars, top 10 overall MLB players in the league right now in Frankie Lindor. So the Mets, they're bound to make a playoff run themselves, if not vie for the National League East Division crown with the Atlanta Braves, who clearly is the best team out of that division. So, yeah. So it came down to the Mets and the Dodgers. And the Mets actually went hard on the Bauer sweepstakes. They went hard for the 30-year-old pitcher after it was reported that they offered him the same contract, a three-year deal, but this time with $110 million. They offered him more money than the Dodgers did. And it looked like it was going to be possible because Bauer on his uh, Twitter or Instagram feed, or rather Twitter feed, he was teasing the Mets and Dodgers. He was teasing fans of what his location will be when he did hat, his little hat giveaway and some shit like that. And it looked like his deal with the Mets looked in, imminent. Because from what I read, uh, the Mets were still favoring player for his services and the Dodgers were still in the mix. But ultimately... Even with the Mets offering him hard-earned money, more money than the Dodgers, which included the same opt-outs the Dodgers gave him as well, you can say he pr pretty much chose the hometown roots. And in a better situation because the Dodgers, like I said, have just came off of winning the World Series for the first time since 1988, finally ending that long, dreadful 32-year drought that they've been having, not finishing at the top, uh, choking in the playoffs and whatnot. He now joins a team that's already won the World Series and already bolt bolstered the three best arms of their rotation themselves. They already have the dynamic and future Hall of Famer Clayton Kershaw. They have David Price. They have a an already young superstar in Walker Buehler and a couple of young arms as well with Julio Urias, Dustin May, and Tony Gonsolin. Now with Bowers' addition and coming to L.A. to his hometown, Hollywood's going to have arguably the best team assembled. So you already have Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts, Corey Seager, who's going to be probably a free agent by this coming winter if the Dodgers don't somehow give him an extension, which he is due for one anyway after the season that he had. <laughs> Good God almighty. And a couple of other young studs that are due for massive extensions along the way. So... This is a real, real huge addition for the Dodgers. And for me, I'm excited because it now gives the Dodgers arguably the best rotation in baseball. Up there along with the Mets and the San Diego Padres. You know, if you can think of like the top three rotations in baseball, I would say the Dodgers, the Padres, and the Mets. And with Bowers' addition, you, have, you now have three Cy Young Award winners on your resume. The great Clayton Kershaw... David Price, and now Trevor Bauer. Three players that have already won the Cy Young Award and a young guy who should have a Cy Young Award in his career at some point. Hopefully I'm betting on this season, but, you know, what happens? So, it's a real big-time signing for the Dodgers looking to go back-to-back -back, um, for the first time in a long time because no team has gone... Back to back world title wins since I, if I'm correct, the New York the New York Yankees when they won four straight from 1990. No, no, no. When they won three straight from 1998 to 2000, 
That was the last time, if I'm correct, that a team had won back-to-back titles. And no team has won that since then. The Yankees, with the era of Derek Jeter, Jorge Posada, Andy Pettit, and Mariano Rivera, the Yankee four, when they won three straight world titles, four out of five, obviously, back in 98 to, t- to 2000. The Dodgers are looking to break that drought. And with this signing, it, pro- it gives them like a legitimate reason, like the odds on favor to win the World Series this coming season. Now, the other um, glaring need that I mentioned earlier in the video was the glaring hole at third base because we're still at an impasse on the situation with uh, Justin Turner. The Dodgers are willing to give him a two-year pack, but he wants a four-year deal. Now, they're still interested in getting him back, but in case if something doesn't go about, we're going to have to go the other route to, um, you know, hold up, to, you know, solidify that position. But since that Bauer signing, the Dodgers are already above the luxury tax threshold with over $205 million. They're, well, they're now well above that. But they still, to, you know... You know, just um, see if they can upgrade at other markets. If not, they can rely on their homegrown talent in Edwin Rios or probably Cody House can have a chance to, uh, uh, you know. Or, rather, you can go in the trade market. Because I was thinking that they might have gotten Nolan Arnauto, but his massive contract was a problem, and he already got dealt to St. Louis, as I said in my uh, last video. And um, so the reliable third base option will be like Chris Bryant from the Chicago Cubs or Eugenio Suarez from the Cincinnati Reds. But I don't know how they're going to pull it off unless they want to move out a bad contract like um, Kenley Jansen or whatnot. Because I, as great as Kenley Jansen was for us, I think he's becoming more unreliable by the day. So, yeah. That's the only problem that I... Um, Seeing with that scenario, if they want to upgrade a third base in, in case JT doesn't come back. And I apologize if I had a long pause because I was texting someone just now. But uh, yeah, that's like my thoughts on that. Trevor Bauer, a huge addition. It'll give LA one of the best rotations in baseball and, and so probably solidify their chances to go back to back this coming season. So I'm excited and I really hope we do go back to back. It'd be really nice. I don't think we have never went back to back titles before. So. Hopefully, this will be the case. But then again, baseball, nothing is ever given. And we'll just see how that goes. So, yeah. Anyways, that's all I have for today's video. If you like the video, like the video. If you want to see more of my content, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to keep up when I'm going to post my next video, hit that bell icon button where you get my notifications. And let me know what you think about the signing. Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think the Dodgers kind of pull off? A 180 without addressing a glaring hole in need? Like, what do you think? Let's have that conversation. And with that being said, I'm Nick Johnson, your favorite sports YouTube journalist, and I'm out. Peace.